Hey, and welcome to the 218 study of the week. And this week we are looking at the parable of the talents to get everything from Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. Now, if you haven't done so, can I encourage you head over to our website. There you can download a free printable pack and you can follow along. It has study notes there, activities, as well as much more. So we're reading Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. So just pause for a moment, read it through your Bibles, and then jump back in to the study. Let's start by looking at the background to this parable. Well, the parable of the talents is found in Matthew and is found in Luke. And the parable is situated in the place where Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's teaching them that he's going to go and he's going to return. But as they wait for his return, they will face difficult times. But Jesus wants them to be certain, without a doubt in their mind, that he is coming back. And he wants his disciples to live, remembering this and living in accordance to the idea that he is going to come back. So Jesus used this parable to highlight that we and the disciples shall make the most of the gifts and opportunities that God gives us as we wait for Jesus' return. So in the parable, it begins with this. A master entrusts some talents to his servants before he goes off on his long journey. We see one of the servants have five talents, another two talents, and then the last servant has one talent now, a talent in this parable is something different to what we may think of as a talent being a skill. A talent was a unit of measurement for precious metals, such as silver or gold, and is about 75 pound in weight. Some experts say it's probably about 6,000 days pay. Either way, what we can think is that even one talent was a large amount to be given. It was worth a lot. So when the master comes home, he calls the servants back to see what they did with the talents that he entrusted them with, what he gave them to look after while he was away. And the first and the second servants used their talents and they doubled the value of it. And the master rewards them. But in the third talent, he appears and he didn't invest his talents at all. Rather, he just buried it in the ground. The third servant admits that he was afraid that he might have lost the master's money. So to protect himself from making the master angry, he just buried it in the ground. Now, in the time before banks, this was actually quite a common way to hide treasure and protect it. But the master, he is furious with the third servant for being lazy. And then he casts him out and he entrusts his portion of the property to the servant um, who had invested the money and made more. What he's saying is, to the, the, to the servant, is that you should have carried on as if I was you work as if I was present. So Jesus tells his stories to the disciples to remind them to keep serving him as they wait his return, to continue Jesus' ministry, Jesus' work on earth as they wait for him to come back. So let's look at some key points in the passage. The first one is this, and we see this in verses 21 to 27. We must put our talents into action. The parable of the talents teaches us that God has a purpose and he has a plan for us right now here on earth. Ephesians 2 verse 10 puts it this way. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. See, each of us have been given unique, special, individual gifts and abilities. But beyond that, we are also called to make disciples of all nations. What we can learn from this is that we're not just put here on earth to be saved and just wait around to go to heaven. God has a purpose for us in a year and in now. And we must be careful that we don't waste the opportunities that God gives us. Like a first and second servant, we should recognize the opportunity that we have received and then make the most of it. Sometimes we like to pick the sensible option which we think is hiding. Especially today in an anti-Christian world where our friends may take the make of us, may call us names, we may not be invited to parties or to social gatherings when we stand up for Jesus, so we stay quiet just to avoid the judgment of those around us how often do we not even use the gifts that god has given us because we want an easier life for example we could be talented in in art or graphic design or in listening to people or cooking and help we could help out then in the soup kitchen or whatever with our time but just for an easier life we pick just to stay at home and not use the gifts we have god has blessed us and he's enabled us to, to do so much that we can be his hands and feet here on earth it's our job to be faithful and with all that God has given us. What does that mean? It means that we should seize the opportunities, all of the opportunities that he provides. We should work faithfully and use our talents for God's glory. So secondly, verse 15, God gives us everything that we need. 
So Jesus says in the parable, let each of the men, each of the servants who have given the talent according to their own ability. The servant who received five talents had everything he needed to produce five more talents. The servant who received two talents had everything he needed, as did the servant who received the one talent. But the third servant chose to do nothing with it. See, too often we are more concerned about what others have than what God has given us. See, we might read this parable and think it doesn't seem fair that each parable had different amounts. And God has also given us different gifts and abilities to benefit the church and his kingdom. See, I'm not sure if you've heard somebody say this, but I definitely have. People say, I don't have the skills or I don't have the abilities to serve God. You know, I can't teach. I can't sing. I can't play any musical instruments. I can't do missionary work. I can't learn foreign languages. I don't have any money. And the list just goes on and on. And the problem is we become more focused on the perceived value of our talents rather than what we can do with the talents that God's given us. This parable reminds us that God doesn't care about what we couldn't do. He cares about what we can do. See, we are not all called to be great preachers in this world or wonderful worship leaders or gifted musicians, professional sports people. Rather, we are given all that we need to make a difference for God where he has placed us. The master didn't expect a servant with two talents to produce five more talents. He only wanted him to be faithful with what he'd been given. We need to think less about what we would do if we were walking in some of the other issues, I think more about what we can do in a place that God has placed us with the gifts and abilities that he has blessed us with. Zig Ziglar once wrote, you are the only person on earth who can use your abilities. So let's use them for God's glory. Thirdly, our talents belong to the master. Verse 19. See, the wealth that the master gave to his servants was not their own. The servants were stewards. They were looking after what belonged to the master. More than this, whatever profit they made wasn't theirs to keep. They were using what the master had given them for the master. And the Bible is clear that we are actually stewards of everything that we have. 1 Corinthians verse 4 verse 2 says, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust, literally in the other word for that is stewards, must prove faithful. God has trusted each of us with something. All that we have belongs to him. Stewardship is this is defined as this, the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. In other words, so it means managing and caring for things that belong to someone else. So in the Bible, it teaches that we need to come to recognize that everything, our talents, our skills and abilities, our time, our money, our relationship, our health, and everything is a gift from God. And we must have this perspective in our hearts and in our minds that we selfishly use them for his glory. See, they're not for us, they're for him. They are his things which he's let us look after. We should use our talents then, not selfishly to gain things for ourselves, but to honor God with them. Fourthly, don't waste the opportunities God gives you. Verse 26. See, the third and the unfaithful servant in this parable, he didn't waste the master's money, but he did waste the opportunity he was given. Let me say it again, he didn't waste the master's money, he wasted the opportunity he was given. I'm sure we've all felt at certain times that we've wasted the opportunity to do something. We had a chance to share the gospel with somebody in our class or in our sports club and we let it pass. Somebody asked us to serve with them in some ministry and we really wanted to, but there was something inside our hearts that just made us a bit scared, we were a bit fearful, so we chose not to get involved. See, we are responsible for what we're being given, and one day we will be held responsible. Two of the servants used their talents they were given, and they doubled it. And the master said, well done, you good and faithful servants. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share my happiness. Well, the third servant, he had a different perspective on the talent. He didn't see it as an opportunity. He saw it as a burden. He didn't see it as something he could use and invest in and please the master with. He saw it as a burden, something that he could lose, displease and anger the master. How do you see the opportunities that God's given you? Colossians 3, 23 to 25, it says this. Whatever you do, do it. Work with it with all of your heart as worker for the Lord. Not for whom are masters, since that you know that you receive an inheritance from the Lord that is your reward. And it is Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. 
You see, in everything that we do, we have the opportunity to use our talents, use our gifts for God's glory. It's the opportunity to glorify him and be used by him here on earth. So Jesus is teaching his disciples. He's telling them this. I'm coming back. I will return. But while I'm gone, work as if I was you. Keep preaching. Keep reaching the lost. Keep building the kingdom. Use your talents and coming back. As believers, we are called to be productive and seize the opportunities God gives us that we can use them for his glory. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for all the gifts and abilities you've given us as individuals and your church. Lord, we just pray that you will help us to step out in faith and use them to seize the opportunities you put before us, to use all our gifts, our abilities, our time, everything we have for your glory. Lord, help us to realize that really nothing we have is our own, that you bless us with them, to use them to build your kingdom here on earth. Lord, we thank you that the promise of this parable, what Jesus is showing his disciples, is that he's coming back. And Lord, we thank you that Jesus is going to return. And as we wait for your wonderful return, help us to be faithful. Keep serving and keep building your kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.